G'day, it's Chris Batcher here. Today I'd like to take you through understanding security in Google Meet and helping you understand how the security settings in Meet can be used to either open up or close down the security around a, a Meet call. So let's get started and have a look. I'm dividing this talk into two sections. One I call high trust meetings and the other is high control meetings. And we'll look at what I mean by both of those terms. And after I go through these slides, I'll actually take you over into a live demonstration and we can have a look at how this stuff actually works. So let's, we've got high trust and high control. Let's look at the difference between the two. In what I'd call a high trust meeting, that's where everyone's considered to be a peer and everyone understands the social norms of what it means to be in a, in a sort of in a call together. Everyone's capable of acting responsibly. Nobody's really in charge. And your typical environment for this might be a business and your typical users would be adults, okay? Now, in a high trust meeting, right, we're all adults here, right? In those sorts of meetings, you don't actually need anyone to be the host. Nobody needs to be in charge of all the others, okay? Everyone's a peer. Um, you, you, and that's because you're entrusting that the participants will actually act responsibly. You need to be okay with the fact that people can manage themselves, they can turn their own cameras on and off, they can mute themselves when they need to, and so on. Um, basically, you don't feel the need to control people in the room or restrict them or stop them from chatting or stop them from screen sharing because you know they're going to act responsibly. The other thing about uh, high trust meetings is it doesn't matter who joins the meeting first. No one needs to be in charge as such. And you'd need to be okay with other people joining without asking the room. Now, there are two settings inside Google Meet that are really important here. One is called host management. You can see it on the uh, screenshot there. And the other is called quick access. I would recommend if you're in a high trust meeting environment where most of your uh, participants are adults who are all capable of just playing nicely, that host management can be off and quick access can be on. And you can see on the screen there some of the things that that entails. So when, when the host management is turned off, there is no host, nobody's in charge. Everybody's basically a peer of each other. And so the concept of managing other people and, you know, controlling them goes out the window because there's nobody can to control the people. Um, quick access is a second setting and it refers to whether people can come back into that meeting, whether they can come into the meeting without an invitation, whether they can come into the meeting without having to ask first and those kinds of things. And there's a list there of what that actually entails. So that's a high trust meeting. Let's look at the other type. And I call this a high control meeting. So in a high control meeting, you've got Someone in the room has to have more control than the others because not everyone can be trusted to play nicely, not everyone's capable of acting responsibly, and someone needs to be in charge. And your typical environment for this would be schools, and your typical users in this case would usually be teachers and students, okay? But we normally refer to them as hosts and guests. So let's look at some of the things that are relevant to this. Now, first things first, before we go into the actual meet call, there's a few things you need to do in the background. In a school, you've typically got teachers and students. And typically, teachers need to have a little bit more control than students because I don't know, sometimes students just don't act responsibly and so there needs to be some layer of control there. And you don't have to use it all the time, but you need to know that you've got it, okay? So first thing you need to do is your administrator needs to go into the administration console and it needs to start defining who is who. Okay, who is a teacher, who is a student? And you do that with this concept of organizational units. So the administrator would go in and they would start to define these categories called OUs, organizational units, and they would put, say, students in one and teachers in another, and they can subdivide them further, as you can see there, into year groups and past students and that kind of thing. Now, I'm using the term teachers and students, but this would apply equally anywhere you need to have some sort of control in the meeting. So it could be managers over workers, adults over children, hosts over guests, whatever terminology you want to put on it, someone needs to be able to buy, be identified as the, the, the group that has the control, okay? And you do that through the OU structure. The second thing you'd need to think about is who's actually allowed to start a meeting? Now, if you don't do this setting, then a lot of the controls I want to talk about further down don't make, they don't matter because you haven't restricted anybody. So one of the first things you should do is once you've got people in OUs, find the staff OU and the setting in the meet video settings that allows video calling. And typically, 
you'd say the staff can make video calls and the students cannot make video calls. Now, of course, these are just general recommendations. You might work in a completely different environment where you're okay with students starting calls. It's not typically the case in most schools. So the typical recommendation would be teachers on, students off in terms of being able to initiate a meet call. Okay, just initiate, not join one, just initiate one. The second setting that you might like to think about is this one uh, called Meet Safety Settings. And again, you'll find it in the Administration Console in the Meet Settings, and I will show you shortly. Um, and this is where you get to decide which level of permission or which how, what should students be able to join, or teachers be able to join and create in terms of meetings. And there's two sections in here. One is called Domain, the other is called Access. The Domain setting controls um, who can join meetings that your school creates. So in other words, outsiders, who should be able to come into the meetings from outside. And you, and you can restrict that to only people within your school, only people with a Google account. So they might be outside your school, but they have a Google account. So you know who they are or just anyone. And that means they don't have to sign in. In other words, you could have completely anonymous users coming in. Okay. So think about that. The second setting is for access. The access setting controls which meetings the users in your school or organization can join. And again, you can have with this one, you can be joining, allowed to join meetings that are created only within your school, meetings that are created within any workspace organization. So in other words, other schools, or just any meetings created by anyone anywhere, including in Gmail personal accounts. Okay. Now, again, there's quite a lot of uh, things to think about there. The recommendation would usually be for the domain settings who can join meetings, Teachers should be able to join anything and students should be able to join meetings uh, only within the organization. The same thing with access. Um, same thing. Generally, teachers can join any meeting. Students can only join the organization or the school meetings. OK, again, no hard and fast rules. They're good recommendations, but you need to decide what's right for your school. Next, there's some other settings to check. So while you're in the admin console, just checking those two very important things that I just mentioned, uh, you might like to consider some of these other settings. So in other words, are you going to allow people to dial in using a phone or not? Should they be allowed to record a meeting or not? What about streaming meetings or not? Um, should the host get the attendance report at the end of the call? Should the students be allowed to have background images behind them in a call? So these are all settings you need to think about. There's no definite right or wrong answers as always, but the recommended settings, generally speaking, to record meetings, just the teachers, not the students, and to stream meetings, just the teachers, not the students, and the other settings, just use your common sense, whatever works for your particular situation, okay? Now, so we've set up those things in the admin console, and if you've done all that correctly, then you should have an initial good base to work from in terms of knowing who's who so that when you start to assign people uh, to be able to make calls or not, that's, uh, that's taken care of. Now, when students are involved, if you're running meetings where students are involved, you probably need at least one person to host the call. There needs to be a host, a teacher. Uh, you're probably going to need some control over the participants. You probably need the option to mute everyone if you need to. So if the students have their microphones open and are all chatting, you need to be able to just shut the microphones off if you need to. You might want to restrict the chat or restrict the screen sharing so students don't automatically start sharing their screen without permission. Um, you probably want to have a situation where the teacher joins the call first before the students come in so they're not unsupervised. Um, and inviting other people to the call. The, the host should have the say about who comes into the call, not, the, not anyone else. Um, in a supervised call with a host, you would need others to ask before joining. You also need the ability to end the call for everybody so that at the end of that call, your teacher shuts it down, students can't come back in and just continue socialising unsupervised. And finally, you don't want the call to be reused. So you don't want, once the teacher leaves, students to just come back in and, and, and hang around. So the recommended settings for a controlled call would be host management on and quick access off. Those would be the things I would recommend. Now, once you get into your call, let's look at this host controls business. When the host management is enabled, so you've turned it on, the host controlling, 
That means the host can do things like mute all the participants, they can enable or disable the screen sharing, enable or disable the chat. Uh, they can actually take users and pin them to the screen. Now, anyone can actually do that. So if a student wants to see, say, a presentation, make sure it's big, they can pin that to the screen. Um, but the host can also remove users from a meeting and give, give host control to another user. So in other words, you can have more than one host in the meeting. Now, all of these things are possible so long as you've got the host management settings turned on, the host can do these things. A couple of things to point out. If you mute all the participants, you cannot unmute them. That would be a pretty big invasion of privacy if you could just go in and turn someone's microphone on without, without their permission. So you cannot unmute someone remotely. You can only mute them. Um, the other thing to think about is if you remove a host, uh, sorry, if you remove a participant from a meeting because they've been misbehaving or that they're not supposed to be there in the first place, you can remove them. But bear in mind that once you remove them, they can't come back into that same meeting. That meeting is now burned for them and they cannot re-enter. So just consider that you would have to start a new meeting. And finally, when the time comes to end the meeting, you need the ability to either leave the meeting yourself but if you leave the meeting yourself and the students are still in the meeting then you're leaving them unsupervised not a good idea so you also need the ability to end the call for everybody and if you do that it will actually shut it down all the participants just get booted out of the room and the meeting gets closed down now when you do that there's a setting on the exit screen there for quick access and we would recommend that as you leave a call, you make sure that that is flicked over to quick access turned off. That means that meeting room cannot be reused and a student cannot come back in there without a teacher present. So those are the important settings you need to think about in terms of Meet security. Now let's pop over to actual Meet and I'll show you how some of this stuff actually works. Okay, so here we are in Google Meet. In fact, we've got three instances of Google Meet here. We've got this green one here. Um, that is the teacher and this one here which is a student called Bart and this one a student called Lisa um, as my two sample students and I want to try a few scenarios here just to show you how this actually does work now before I do I just want to reiterate those two very important things in the administration console this is the admin console uh, one was to make sure that you have your organizational units in place and you can see if I come in here, I have uh, my organizational units of staff and students. Very important. And right now, my Simpsons group, where Bart and Lisa happen to live at the moment, is inside my students. In other words, the Simpsons group is inheriting whatever change I put on the students group. So if I allow a permission here, it will equally be allowed here unless I override it manually, which I'm not doing. Okay, so that's important. The second thing is if I go into the apps section here, into workspace and look at the settings for Google Meet. You'll see these are where those settings are kept. One here's the, the safety settings that I mentioned previously about uh, who can join and uh, who's allowed in and who's allowed out of the, of the Meet calls within your domain. Um, and this is the main one here, the video Meet settings. This is where I said those uh, very important settings are kept in terms of who's allowed to do what. And let's just pick this one down the bottom here, this video calling, like who is allowed to make a video call or not. But one of the reasons one of, the, one of the very important principles of uh, having students and teachers inside a school in terms of Meet is that we're probably not allowing students to create video calls. And if I just go back over here and just show you, you'll notice that the teacher in this case, this one here, has a blue button that says new meeting, whereas the students do not. So these students literally cannot create a new meeting because there's no button to do it with. Okay. Now, uh, if I just just to show you how powerful this actually is. If I come over here and just open up this My Schools thing, you'll see if I click on Staff, down here in Video Calling, it says On, and if I say Students, it says Off. So I've literally set the permissions there as to what those domains can do. Now, have a look at this. If I open up the students here and pick the Simpsons, where Bart and Lisa are currently residing, and I override this one by clicking on this and saying, let's, let's allow that one to make calls. So I'm applying to the Simpsons here, giving them permission to make calls. If I save that change and I come back over here now and look at that, this is Bart, right? If I refresh that screen, you'll notice he now has a new meeting button. 
Same over here with Lisa, if I refresh that screen, she now has a new meeting button. So I've given these two users permission to start meetings now. Now, if they have permission to start meetings, then a lot of these other controls inside the Meet don't matter because they can go and start a meeting without a teacher being present anyway, right? So very important, we're stopping students from being able to instigate a Meet, okay? That's foundational to all of these security settings. So I'm gonna go back and turn that off and just save that. And as soon as that saves, let's just refresh this again. And you'll see that that blue button goes away and this blue button goes away. And so you can see this is how it should be. All right, now let's go into the actual meets and let's have a little play with this. Let's start by trying the high, uh, the, the high trust meeting. In other words, we're okay with people just coming into the meeting and sort of not having anyone in charge. Let's do that. I'm gonna create a new meeting here just by saying start an instant meeting. And this meeting will start up like so. You don't really need to see my camera and things. So I'm just gonna turn that off, turn the camera and microphone off, get rid of this. And I'm just gonna copy that code because I'll need that in a minute. Okay, now the security settings in Meet are held here for the, for the person who starts the call underneath this host controls button here. And you can see right now, host management is turned on. Now that's only something you'd use if in a high uh, control environment. In a high trust environment, you might not need that. So let's turn that off and let's have a look and see what actually happens. The other thing, we'll allow quick access. Quick access means people can join the meeting without asking permission. So if I go over here now and go into say Bart and hit the join button, Bart over here, it looks remarkably like me, um, I'll just turn that off, um, has a join button. There's no ask for permission to join, it just says join. And if I click that button, he comes straight into the meeting. I didn't have to press an admit, uh, like admit the person into the meeting or allow them permission to come in. Because quick access is turned on, that user can come straight in without having to ask. Now, let's just try this. If I turn the quick access off, okay, so now theoretically what should happen is if a, if a user tries to come into this meeting, they'll need to either be invited or be allowed. So let's try this with Lisa's uh, meet down here. So we'll do the same code, hit the join button. And you'll notice in this case, her button says ask to join. So the first one for Bart, he was just allowed to join without asking. For Lisa, because we turned quick access off, she has to ask to join and now that the host of the meeting has to actually admit her. Let me just turn this camera and stuff off. Um, and I admit her into the meeting and like so. And so now Bart and Lisa are both in the meeting. One of them came in without asking because quick access was on. Lisa had to ask because I'd turned quick access off. It's a really, really important point. Now, host management is off, which means there is no host, which means if I was to look at the users here in the list, I don't get any controls at the top for muting anybody. If I click on someone's here, I, I can't grant them host controls unless it switches um, host management on. Okay, and it would do that. If I, if I did grant host controls, it would turn all the management back on. But I, I can't mute anyone. I, I'm, I literally am not in control of this meeting. Okay, so let's just close this meeting down. And I'm gonna leave that call. And you notice I left the call as the teacher but Bart and Lisa are still in the call, okay? Not ideal for a school situation. And that was because host management was turned off. So if I just exit this as Bart and exit this as Lisa, you can see now we're all back to the beginning again. Now let's just, um, let's just try a version two of this. Let's try and see what happens if we try and be a bit more restrictive about how this works. So I'm gonna start a new meeting again. So this is meeting number two. And this time, before we get started, let me just turn off my camera and microphone again. Oops, sorry, wrong button. That one there, and let's get rid of this. Okay, I'll copy the meeting code because I'll need that in a second. And let's take a look at the settings. You can see host management is on, quick access is on. So if I was trying to do a high control meeting, I'd want my host management on, but I'd want my quick access off, okay? Right, let's see what happens now when these people try and join. So Bart over here tries to join and has to ask, right? Ask to join. 
Let me turn the cameras off. Right, ask to join, and I have to now allow him by admitting him into the room, like so. And the same will be true for Lisa, because she's also under this uh, quick access thing turned off. So we'll join that. And Lisa, let's turn these cameras off again. Ask to join, and again, I have to admit her because I have quick access turned off. All right, so everyone's in the room now, but the important difference this time was we have some host management in place. Now, if I look at my list of users, you can see I have these buttons across the top that I didn't have before when I wasn't running management where I can mute everyone. So for example, let's say Bart's microphone is, oh, I want to do, let me turn, uh, I'm, it's hard to get, hard to not have feedback here, but if I just turn that, Sorry about the feedback there, but you saw what happened there. I unmuted the microphones. Sorry about the feedback. But then as soon as I hit this all muted button, the microphones went off again. Now I can't unmute them. They would have to unmute themselves, privacy reasons, okay? But I can mute everybody in one hit. The other thing I've got here is host controls. So this is where I can decide whether my users want to share their screen or be able to send messages. Now, to demonstrate this, have a look at this thing here. This button here is the ability to share your screen. So if Bart wanted to share his screen with me, he could click on this button here. He could find his screen or window or tab and actually share it into the main meeting. Now, most of the time that's probably fine. But if you don't want that, what you can do is turn this little switch off and watch what happens to this button and the same one for Lisa. When I turn this off, those buttons get grayed out and now they can't be clicked. So those users can't share a screen now because they literally cannot turn it on. Okay, so that's that's what that setting does. And then the other one is down here in the chat. Let's just open the chat for both these users. And you can see if Bart or Lisa wants to chat, they can just type in here and say hello, right? And add a meeting into the chat like so. But if I don't want that to happen, I can turn this off and you'll notice now it says chat isn't available at this time. All right, so these are the host controls that are giving me now a lot of control over what's happening in my classroom. Let's just uh, get rid of that. Now the other thing I could do, let's, uh, let's, let me just turn the chat back on. Let's turn all that back on, okay. Now, and you can see they've got their share button back and they can now send messages again. Now what if I wanted to make Bart a co-host or a co-moderator of this meeting, what I can do is click on the three dots next to his name and say grant host controls. Now just to show you how this works, let me let me give you an example here. Hosts can record the meeting, non-hosts cannot when it's moderated or when it when it's when there are controls in place. Okay. So if Bart was to go over here to the this panel here where you would normally find the record button and let me just show you on the on me as the host I have a record option here. Bart and Lisa do not. Let me just bring up Lisa's as well. So they don't have a record button. But if I was to go into the settings here and select Bart and say, make him a host, grant host controls, watch what happens. Over here, the recording button suddenly appears. So Bart now has the permission to do things that a host can do, such as record the meeting um, and, and all of those other things that host can do. He literally has the same permissions as me now. Same thing if I wanted to do with Lisa, if I go in there, grant host controls, and you'll notice down here, the recording option appears. And if I go in here and revoke or remove the host controls from Lisa, the recording button goes away. And removing the host controls from Bart, the recording button goes away. So a lot of control there. Now the last thing you saw last time when I, as the teacher, quit the meeting, I left, the student stayed in there. Let's try it again now, we're under moderation control. If I quit, quit the meeting right now, it asks me this question, do I wanna just leave the call or end the call for everybody? And this switch here to determine whether this room gets left in the state of quick access being available or not available, on or off. So I don't want my students coming back in here, so I need to turn the quick access off and end the call. And you'll see what it does is it hangs up the call for everybody like so. Boom, they're all out of the call. The call's ended now. And just to prove you something to you, if I was to go back to this screen here and put that same code back in, so Bart is now trying to come back into the room, right? He can hit the join button, but when he tries to join the room by saying ask to join, he'll just sit there being asked to join because there's nobody there anymore to actually allow him in. 
So that call is just sitting in limbo and won't ever go anywhere. Wow, covered a lot of ground there, but I hope you can see that the host controls and the quick access settings inside Google Meet actually give you an enormous amount of flexibility in terms of allowing who can do what and how they can do it and whether you can grant them host controls and so on. Um, it really does give you an enormous sense of security to be able to run a Meet call now and have really fine control over who can do what. It has to be coupled with the settings over in the admin console because they're an important component. If students can just come and start the <clears throat> start the call without a teacher anyway, then this some of this becomes a moot point, right? So I hope that's helpful. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments and uh, I will try and help. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.